Slightly here, you can see it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Good evening, everybody. Everybody, I take it, can hear me clearly. Amen. Okay. Good evening. <laughs> okay. Okay. We can't really see the screen particularly well, but no, but we can still. Oh, we've here. got these, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Just down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so um, I think we mentioned in the intro on Wednesday evening that um, we were just going to share. We were just going to share very quickly um, some encouraging um, testimonies of how the Lord has brought us from where we were to where we are now at present. Because um, uh, some of you may not know um, what that journey has consisted of. But the good news is, just very, very quickly, um, okay, just a, a very quick, we are at the moment, I think I did mention this, we're living in Scotland at the moment, um, in the country. We've been there for nearly 15 years, something like that. Um, so we didn't grow up in the country or anything like that. We, we had just normal, regular lives like everybody else. So that's, that's where we came from. But the good news is, before we even get into the presentation, the good news is we have technically spied out the land, like Joshua and Caleb, and we have a good report. Amen? A very good report to give. However, the caveat is, just like the Israelites at the time, even though they were given Canaan, when they came into the land, there were still some battles to get over and get through. There were still a lot of hurdles. So the idea is that on your journey, um, God willing, as you continue doing what God is asking you to do in your own individual families, things, they might be plain sailing, and if that is the case, praise the Lord. But at the same time, we live in a world which is full of sin, and um, we have to report that it hasn't always been plain sailing. Things aren't always perfect, but we're going to still go forward in Jesus' name. Amen? So, that's the, that's the report. And um, as we were thinking about this, family together, bringing the family together, we were saying, actually, it's no coincidence that when we initially started this journey of um, being in the country and uh, more recently being involved in agriculture, we have found that Specifically, God is calling us as families to be together, to work together. It's quite clear as day. It's just it's one of these things where as the more that you study it, then the more you see it. But before, when you didn't know anything about it, you didn't really see it. It probably just went straight over your head. It went over our heads. So if some of you have heard our story before, please um, be Don't patient worry. with us. Yeah. It might just be um, repetition, but, you know testimonies can it's good to always keep repeating the same testimony if it can bring encouragement to 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 folks but there are new people here that I, i've come to understand there's quite a lot of new families here so we thought there's no point in us just coming up here and speaking because people might be thinking well who are they and you know why are they there you know sometimes i do wonder why we're here but <laughs> yeah, that's another story <laughs> that's just another story but um so if some of the, you may rem remember some of the slides from before because it's just Bible and Spirit of Prophecy never goes away, so we're going to rehash some of the stuff that we've shared before. But from a different focus. And then towards the end, then we're going to share some new photos and slightly turn the focus towards uh, bringing the family together. Yeah, so very quickly, this is one of the questions that we had when we first moved to the country, which was, what do we do for occupations? Now, obviously, you know, not obviously, but when... You, if you are thinking about, if you, if you feel that God has impressed you to take that move in faith to the country, one of the questions that you might have is, what am I going to do? Because whatever it is that you're doing at the moment, it could be that God is asking you to change your occupation. It could be that God is asking you to put your faith completely in his hands, and that being the case, then you won't be relying on whatever it is that you've been used to. It will be a complete new change but God has a plan 
for your life. This is what we have to believe. And that plan is for each and every one of you. Now, specifically, he has a plan, and we're going to just read about that very quickly. Are you able to? I barely see. <laughs> uh, okay. So you can see there it says, in God's plan for Israel, and we are spiritual Israel. That's us. Every family had a home on the land with sufficient ground for tilling. Thus were provided both the means and the incentive for a useful, industrious, and self-supporting life. And no devising of men has ever improved upon that plan. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, to the world's departure from it is owing to, to a large degree the poverty and wretchedness that exist today. Now, with highlighting where it says there, no devising of men has improved upon that plan. That plan is the plan of what we call agriculture or the agrarian lifestyle. Living off of the land and sustaining yourselves by the land. That was God's original plan, and what the quote is saying, and there's numerous other quotes, but we haven't got time, but what God is saying is that that plan has never changed from Israel, ancient Israel, to today, and we are spiritual Israel. So, thank you. <laughs> what has changed, what has changed is us. And culture. <laughs> As a people, we've moved away from what we consider menial work, labor intensive work and um, as people we like to be comfortable in what we're doing not um, yeah anyway so the farmer and his sons so again we're looking at family have the open book of nature before them and they should learn that farming is what kind of occupation noble now this is in God's eyes not in our eyes because in man's eyes farming predominantly you get dirt under your nails yeah, it's not regarded as a you know. noble occupation it's, it's probably as i said the opposite it's regarded as menial work you don't need to have any brain cells to be able to do this kind of work that's how people regard it but in terms of how Matt, how god views it he says that it's actually noble and that farmer the farmer which is would be the father and his sons have an opportunity to be out in nature every single day and we really take these words home you know we've had so many incidences on the farm mm. too many to, to even count where we've looked at each other and we're like where is we have um three sons yeah. our eldest is 30 his name is marie our second is 19 dinari and caleb caleb is a great help on the farm mm. he runs the tractor he does all of that work any tractor work, changing the implements on the tractor. He's he's, he has a license. <laughs> we had to get him a license. And so he's licensed to do that. But there are occasions where it's just hard work. It's hard. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. And we've looked at each other, or you've looked at me, and what, what do you say? Yeah, where's, where's the other children? Where are they? Where where's are the Marie? Where's, yeah. where's Denari? We need, we need this young, vibrant strength. You know, yeah, to do what we need to and do. You'll see, you'll see later on. We've got some f pictures, but we just thought we'd start with the quotes to set the scene. Yeah, because <laughs> God's ideal is that families are together, working together. This is God's. So you've got to kind of try and get this picture of not just a family being together. And don't get me wrong, not just a family being together, having Bible study. That is perfect and that is great. But being together all the time. This is God's ideal. Oh. Uh, yeah, so. It was not God's purpose that his people should be crowded into cities, huddled together in terraces and tenements. In the beginning, he placed our first parents in a garden amidst the beautiful sights and attractive sounds of nature. And these sights and sounds he desires men to rejoice in today. Mm. The more nearly we come into harmony with God's original plan, the more favorable will be our position for the recovery and preservation of health. Yeah, and we were just talking about this uh, while we were in the car again. Because um, as, as most of us will probably know in this room, we have, in terms of health principles, we have, sorry, we have New Start. Does everybody know what New Start is all about? Okay. Now, New Start, the principles of, of New Start, if you're following God's original plan, you don't have to worry about. Do you, do you know why we say that? <laughs> okay. Because Spell it out. <laughs> For example, you don't have to worry about getting the right amount of air 
or getting the right amount of sunlight or getting the right amount of exercise 20 minutes a day, the right amount of water, because when you're out there working on the farm, you are. We if anyone's have, done farming, you'll we, know. <laughs> you're we, drinking copious amounts of water you have just to, to because, keep yourself hydrated. Because you just get so hot and sweaty. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so we have this huge IBC that's on a pump, which basically we set the irrigation up in a way. We have an IBC which goes into a pump, and then from the pump it feeds the tunnels, and we have four commercial tunnels. Then it goes off and it feeds the other, what do we call them, plots. Yeah. And, um, but there's a hose that, that runs from the house because it has the fastest pressure into the IBC. And we found ourselves on many occasions pulling Take that out. out. <laughs> And we're just trying to find any orifice that we can put it in, and we're just downing this water. Yeah, so and that's sometimes the children, they're just, you know, we see puddles everywhere because they're just playing in it, and it's going everywhere in yeah. the hot sun, that is. So that's more of a by the by. So being out in nature, as we know, doing what God has intended us to do, there are lots of benefits. So let's just go on here, just very quickly. Agriculture. God's, and as we've seen, it's God's original occupation for man. Is it important in the last days? Yeah, the time is not far distant when the laws against Sunday labor will be more stringent. And let me just stop right there. For many of us, if we're watching what's going on in the world, I'm sure we can all attest to the fact that we're getting closer and closer to this happening. Yeah. Could we not see it? Mm -hmm. We are definitely getting closer and closer. Yeah. And there's always, there, there always seems to be, you know, when we take God at his word and we follow his plan, he takes care of his people because we were one of the occupations during the pandemic that could continue. Yeah. Nothing stopped for us. Our lives didn't really change. It didn't change. It didn't at change. All. The children were still outside every day. As a matter of fact, for the pandemic, we actually had more work. Yeah. Where other industries were closing down we actually had more work. And we were able to have people come and help us because obviously work increased and, and all was well in the world, you know? So yeah. uh, I think that will be, you know, because if you look in history, these things have happened in the past as well, where during the war, agricultural um, services were able to continue, whereas other industries had to close down. Hmm. Okay. Can we so yeah, you can skip some of these. This is just some pictures of when we first started growing that's just the field. When we first started, we were on an a acre One of ground. Acre. It, was, um, it came with the property that we were renting. So at the moment, we don't own any property. Since we've been in Scotland, we've been renting. So if you're in a position where you, you can um, sell your own property and buy something, praise the Lord. That hasn't been our story, but we're just trying to show this po it's possible. It, it's possible. And God will, um, God will still bless. This is just some of the things that just shows you, you know, the farmer and his sons always kept busy. The land was tilled. We had a contract farmer to do that. So if you don't own equipment, don't think, oh, I need to have a tractor and I need to have this and I need to have a... You don't. You can just get a contract farmer, 40 pounds an hour. They'll come in and they'll do whatever you ask them to do. If we wanted to, we could have had the whole acre sown in corn or, or whatever, barley. We could have had them just provide them with what, what we need and they'll do it for us. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't know, Daniel, if you can um, fast. Um, so this was one of the first tunnels that we put up. So we didn't know everything at the time. No. You can see this is made of plastic conduit and the whole thing just flopped. Yeah, yeah. The neighbours must have been watching, scratching their head, thinking they're not serious, are they? Yeah, as so soon as we put it up, it, it just collapsed straight away. But the point was, we were very, very enthusiastic to do what the Lord has asked us to do. So whether it worked or not, we weren't really too concerned. It just concerned. shows you that we had We just failures. wanted to have fun. It, it yeah. have fun. <laughs> As well. We were very serious about it, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. So this is just some wood, because our house was heated with wood, some strawberries that we, that we grew. And so we grow on 100-foot beds, mm. 30 inches uh, wide. Yep. And we basically, where we are now, we have plots. And in the plots, we have 10 100-foot beds. Um, that are 30 inch wide with a walkway in between yeah. and we have many of those yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay that was just a temperature gauge to show you that it doesn't matter that you're in the UK and in particular in Scotland you can still grow we had um, temperatures the, the, the thermometer would only go to 50 degrees C but it would it was always off the scale so it just shows you that you can grow um, heat loving plants yeah, in the UK problem. without any issues um, is it not working no it seems to have so that's, um, I think that looks like 
either a Nea or Lily's hands. Just yeah. I mean, what you'll find if you've done growing before is that as adults, we have our own tastes and our own likes. But for the young people, they have things that they gravitate to. So most young people kind of gravitate to some of the sweet stuff, so strawberries yeah. and the fruits, things like that, growing so those. Th this is this is Denari and Kayla, um, Denari and Anea. They're planting violas because mm. we would sell edible flowers to the chef restaurant industry. So they're planting out at the beginning of the season. That's some of the violas that we have. Uh, go ahead. You can keep going. Mm -hmm. And again. And this is just how we package the stuff. Yeah. And so this is um, some of the restaurants. They would share some of the pictures of, this is our microgreens that we grew. So they would yeah. share pictures on their Instagram or whatever of the, what they, this is some of the chefs that we were working with. It's just to give you an idea so that you can see. Yeah. Now, just, just this, to... This, if you just oh. pause here. Um, no, go forward. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so this, this, was, this is actually Prince Charles's restaurant um, in... It's near Balmoral. King it's King Charles. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is now King Charles's. Well, his restaurant in... It's just in Balata. It's just Balmoral's kind of just on just the, the outside of Balata. And so I think he rescued because this place was flooded and he rescued it and it's a very very upmarket restaurant and so the, it, the chef actually contacted us because he'd heard through the grapevine that we had excellent mm. microgreens and so the chef contacted us and asked if we would supply them which we did which we did now just to, to say some other just to say on here the, our take on on our journey our take with the lord is if the lord has said something in his word if he's made a promise then we're going to take him at his word and claim that promise back to him. So if the Lord is, so the way we think, if the Lord is asking you, putting it on your heart, for example, for you to come out of the city and move to the country, you don't have, to, my understanding is you don't have to worry so much about what are you going to do because God knows specifically what you're going to do. So for example, he's, from what we've seen, He's calling us all to be part of agriculture. For agriculture, you need to be able to sell to somebody or someone. That way you get paid. So my understanding is, well, the Lord has all of our customers. He knows who our customers are. So I don't need to necessarily go out of my way. You can do if you want to, but you don't necessarily need to go out of your way to try and come up with all sorts of advertising and marketing campaigns and this, we that, never the have. other. In fact, if you want to, I'm sure you can, but <laughs> we would just get on our knees and pray, Lord, we've done our homework, we've grown our produce, now you need to bring the customers to us. And that has been the answer to the prayers. God, each time, has brought the customers to us. Yeah, we've never advertised. We've, never, we've not spent a penny on advertising at all. Because so if God is asking you to do something, then he's going to enable you. Mm -hmm. That's the promise that we yes, see. Yes, we're, we're told his biddings are enablings. And yeah. We have to believe that. Okay, so this is just some more of the... <laughs> so this is Denari and Caleb. They would go on... Deli this is another um, expression of family togetherness because they would go on deliveries with Robert because he can. It's his business. If he wants to take his sons, he will. And we would send... They would actually go in and do the deliveries as well. And sometimes Robert would have the app with all the places that he had to go and do the drop-offs. And the boys would take it in turns. And sometimes I would go and the kids would take it in turns. Even the girls, mm. you know, mm. as young as they are, the chefs don't mind. Well... I might walk in with them or whatever, but you would just have the app and he'll just drive to the place and then one of the boys would get out, get the stuff, take it in, you know, get paid if it was a cash delivery or whatever. Mm. Um, some people would be on account. Yeah, but and part of the perks are that <laughs> with this particular, we like this bit, with this particular customer. You can see in the background, it's called Underdog. They're in Edinburgh. Yeah, Is it Edinburgh? The, Dundee? Dundee. Yeah, yeah, they were one of the first at the time in the area that had a vegan, non-dairy, yeah, plant-based ice cream. Soft, soft, soft scoop. Sir. Yeah, soft scoop, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so obviously, it's like we can kind of trade. <laughs> so that would be our perk. Yeah. Um, you know, not too often, obviously, Go for ahead. health reasons. But um, again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. Now, I'm just going to say here, at the end of the day, we should have actually said this yeah, right at the beginning, because all of this, what we just shared before, really doesn't have a, a bearing unless we are in a loving relationship with the Lord. Because everything that we're doing isn't, it's not prescripted 
it's uh, love, you know, motivated. It's love motivated. So because we love the Lord, because he saved us, we want to do everything in our power to show that we love him as well. We, so just, we just decided, you know, enough of trying to just do our own thing. We which, can. Which can there, work. There's nothing wrong with doing your own thing to a certain extent, you know, but we just decided what about, we don't want to do our own thing. Yeah. Let's what about just, doing what God wants us to do? Let, let's just ask him, what, yeah. what do you want us to do? You know, and agriculture was the thing that came our way, <clears throat> you know, and so we just thought, I mean, we didn't even know. I hadn't even grown a tomato before. Mm. Actually, I did. One cherry tomato. I was actually in Milton Keynes and I thought, oh, this will be great. Let's buy this Grow kit bag. Mm. for Denari. He must have been three. And um, I grew it and it grew one tomato. And he plucked it off and popped it in his mouth and that was it. <laughs> and that was all we did. That, that is, just to give you encouragement, yeah. that's all the experience of growing that I had had. Yeah. I even tried to grow flowers when I was a child, but mm. they never came up. I don't know whatever happened to those. And I planted an apple seed when I was probably like a toddler. With the expectation. Uh, that I was going to get an apple tree, but that never happened either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. no experience whatsoever, but just the desire to do what God is asking us to do. So, you know, as we've walked through this journey, there's been so many testimonies, like we only get an hour. Yeah. In fact, where's my phone so we can keep yeah, an eye on the just, time? Just quick. No, that's really got the time. Oh, OK. So basically, you know, we, oh, we, we've just never, we just pray. Literally, we just pray. You know, we have, we have so many testimonies that we can share of how God's just come through financially in incredible ways. And um, one just of them... Just from prayer. Yeah. Prayer alone. And no intervent. Prayer and then don't intervene. Well, we couldn't because we, <laughs> whenever we pray, it's because there's nothing else. It's, yeah. You know, there's nothing much we can do other than pray. But on this occasion, you know, we've shared this testimony before where Robert came into me one day and said, Oh, Mish, you know, have you prayed for the Lord to bless our farm recently? Yeah. And I was like, no, not, not recently. And he says, oh, well, I think we should pray for the Lord to bless our farm. I mean, I don't really know what that means. Like, I never really did ask you what that meant. Was mm. it financial? Was it, what, what was it? <laughs> you know, what does that look like? And um, so we prayed it anyway. And then I think a couple of days later, uh, Robert had, um, he received a phone call, but we were eating lunch. And so I looked at him as usual and said, aren't you going to answer that? And he's like, no, I'm eating lunch. <laughs> so I was like, okay, fine. So then we ate. And then it happened the next day. And we were actually eating lunch again. I said, oh, aren't you going to answer that? And he's like, no, I'm eating lunch. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> and then I think it was like the third day, he happened to check his messages. And it was the BBC had contacted us. <laughs> and uh, they said, oh, we would love to come and film your farm for a series of um, Escape to the Country. Um, you know, we really love what you guys are doing. We've seen you on uh, Instagram or whatever, Facebook or something, and we'd just love to, to include you because it's really interesting what you guys are doing, veganic. What is that anyway, you know? And so um, we, cr we called them back immediately, and they said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, because these things, these production teams, they move fast. And so they were like, oh, I, we're really sorry. Um, we've decided to film something else. And we were just really, <laughs> we kind of melted. We were like, oh. That was like a missed opportunity. And, you know, we, we know what the Bible says. That we're not supposed to get angry and we're not supposed to be upset. But, you know, there was that temptation to sort of like, why don't you just answer your phone? Or why don't you check your messages the same day, you know? But, you know, we, we were cool about it. We we're like, let the Lord's will be done. Um, but we did pray. We prayed. We did pray. And, um, and I confessed. <laughs> and um, asked God to forgive the sins. Yeah. We repented. And the prayer was on along the lines of, I was really, really sorry. Um, and the prayer was, um, but if, you if your name can be glorified, glorified, then make a way. If this was just some ego thing, then just leave, let, it alone. leave that. Don't but worry if about your it. name can be glorified, make a way. And we went to bed. And we went to bed. First thing the next morning, the um, producer, uh, the, the phone one, rang. One, the phone <laughs> rang. And one of the team... He picked up the phone this time. <laughs> and one of the team um, for the producer said it was the same guy. He said, oh, he said, um, I spoke to the producer this morning and they still want to film you. 
So we were like, oh, praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. And so they contacted us um, again and they need to do an interview and all of this kind of stuff over the phone just to make sure that it fits their script. And, and it did. And they came. And so it still is airing, actually, um, because we have people that we've had. We had a friend that called us from the Netherlands. They're like, we just saw you. And I was like, huh? OK, <laughs> fine. But they it, it still it still shows. I think they've been repeating it like yeah. over and over. Yeah. And so this is Sonali Shah and her and film people crew. are so people are so intrigued about families being out in the country doing what they're doing, they, they're, they can't get their heads wrapped around this whole thing. So not just Sonali Shah, but the crew, just people in general, reporters, they want to know what you're about. And whenever people ask us this, and I'm talking about people like this, here, what are you doing out here, this, that, the other? It's an opportunity yeah. for us to share our testimony. It's always a, an opportunity to witness, and they're always like, you know, sort of really thrown back, like, so you came from down south, to and they, they'll sort of repeat it back to you, to hear, to this is just awesome, this is just amazing, you know. Mm. And I remember Snarly Shah, um, she was like, oh, so this is like great, so your kid's just like growing up here on the farm? So she said, it's like a farm school. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's actually, true. actually it is, it's a farm school, <laughs> yeah, you know, you've really true. coined that. And then since then, we've also had STV come out on a number of occasions mm. to film, just different things for news, just different takes like, but this new um, cost of living crisis, they, they contacted us and asked if we would be filmed again for just to hear our voice on that, I suppose. And it's really interesting <laughs> because, as I said, it's a unique witnessing opportunity where people can see what you are doing. And the only reason that you're doing this is because of what God said, because that's what we tell people. You know, when people ask us, well, what brought you here? Well, it was God. You know, well, what about? They want more detail. We share. Well, we read a little book, Country Living, written by Ellen White. You know, people are intrigued. They want yeah. the whole story. We, what we didn't put up here, um, what is the next slide, actually? Okay, you can go back. Well, what we didn't put there is um, we actually had the film crew for um, a music artist. I think it was Pharrell Williams mm. and Jay-Z contacted well, their video production team contacted us and said, oh, um, it was around the Black, Black Lives Matters. And they did the same thing. And they were like, oh, we really want, we've seen your farm. And we just think your farm is just like really amazing, like what you're doing there. Um, you know, would you be included in a video called The Entrepreneur? Um, you know, it was, it's basically to celebrate um, black entrepreneurs. So we were kind of a bit reluctant on that one. But we prayed about it and we did it in the end and we were like okay well you know what what do we do do we say that the bbc are pure and holy and jay-z's not well they're both in the world in the same way so we'll do it and hope for the best really and it turned out that it wasn't as bad as we thought it might have been because you know oftentimes there's a lot of Immodesty. indecent exposure and things like that but it was it was c completely clean so we were really pleased about that but that kind of was a trigger to other things happening. So we can see that God actually used that to open, to other open doors. up other doors. And then it was, again, another talking point. And we ended up with, I don't know what happened, but just things went just bananas after that. And we had, like, the press were just contacting us, contacting us. It was actually a bit much. After mm. a while, it's like, oh, you know, mm. I don't really, this is too much. You know, and so I think it was Frail Williams' PR team contacted, her, contacted us, her, his PR manager, and said, okay, don't worry about it. We'll deal with any kind of interviews, or if anybody wants to interview you, we'll deal with it from now on, and we'll book it, and we'll contact you. And if you give us photos, we'll send it to them, and da-da-da-da-da. So it turns out, anyway, this just went all over the world. Africa News, I don't even know, just all over the world. But... Whenever the interviewers would contact us and ask us our story, we would always tell them exactly what our testimony is about the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, Ellen G. White, country living, the whole lot. Now, obviously, some of the newspapers would knock some of that information out, but there were a couple that stayed in. Mm. The Telegraph, I think, in the Times. And the Times. And they actually said everything that we told them. They even put the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they put about the Bible, they put about Spirit of Prophecy, they put the name of the book, they put everything, everything. there. So everything. we were like, this is just amazing. You know, this was just an amazing way. The farm, it's like, and it's so funny because in the early days, Robert was kind of into music. 
Sorry. <laughs> He's got his back towards people. He was really into music and sort of saw himself as an upcoming rap artist or something, <laughs> production, <laughs> whatever. And he had a studio and all of everything until we learned, obviously, the truth about music. Mm. And then he sold all the studio stuff and just canned the whole idea of being into music. And, you know, because I think he even had an interview with whoever it was, somebody in America anyway. And so he canned all of that. And then we would laugh and we would say, look at this. You end up on Jay-Z's video, on farming a on a tractor, of all things, you know, just crazy, God absolutely has a crazy. Sense of humor. So we, we would often laugh about this. And so even some friends from Reading that yeah. knew Robert before and the music and stuff that he, it's just ironic. You know, they would call us up and laugh and say, ha, huh, look at you on his, how did you get there? Yeah, we did it through agriculture and through farming. Who would have known it? So, so bringing the family together, yeah. So here's a picture that was taken actually just last week. I took Talika mm -hmm. off. You probably met our daughter. She was completely covered. I think Don said, what was it? Or was it Talika that said you could just see 10% of her or 1%, whatever it was. <laughs> but she was here, but she didn't want to be in the picture. We do have one with her, but we took it out because she didn't want to be on the picture. And so this is us. This was taken last week. Mm. All the family were home. Every single one, it was crazy. I was like, oh, we need a bigger house. <laughs> but um, we, if we can just continue on. Mm -hmm. we, um, we just want to share a little. Mm, yeah, go on. You want to say something? No, go on. Yeah, we just want to share a little bit more about what's been happening recently on the subject of family togetherness. It's our desire, our heart's desire, and God knows, it's our heart's desire actually to have a family farm. Mm. We didn't really do this just because of us. We didn't do it because we just want to make money. You know, we did it because of what we saw read in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And we could see God's, we could, we had a vision of what God wants for families. And we just see that, and we actually see even around us mm. with um, mm. just secular society even. That's right. There's families that they're working together. Generational you know? farmers. You must see you know? it around in Wales. <clears throat> Um, maybe a little bit in, in, in England, you get it a lot more in Scotland as well. Generational farmers, this is not a new concept, it's just for us, it's, it, it's hard to, gra you know, to grasp, yeah. but this is a concept that's been around for a long and, time. And this really is our heart's desire. And so we're going to just show you some of these pictures as we sort of push on, but we've, this is kind of doesn't really flow particularly well, sorry. but anyway, is that you? Yeah, sorry. So anyway, just as a side note, this is some of the produce that we are currently, that this year we, we put out. Um, we have some, here's some black kale and what we call an artisan cherry mix of cherry tomatoes. If you just go back one yeah, more. I'm just, um, is that? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our niche. Um, the reason why a lot of these people are just interested in what it is that we do is because we farm veganically, which is actually non-conventional. It's not a conventional way to farm. We don't use any animal inputs at all. And people are really intrigued in that. And so, and I think this is why a lot of the media have sort of, you know, obviously it's the Lord, mm -hmm. but the Lord gave us, in fact, gave Robert this whole concept of um, farming veganically. So here is a picture of us with two chefs. These chefs are actually very important people mm. um, in our lives at the moment. Um, the guy that's next to me, his name is Graham. He has a badge there that says ESS. Every single thing that we've grown this year has gone to their catering company. Their catering company is the largest catering company in the world. And we never contacted them. This is all God. Because what happened is, you know, this is like a thousand testimonies rolled into one. But, but very quickly. For some of you, you may already know, but we were having trouble with our neighbor where we were previously living. And the Lord basically got us into a property, which was 10 acres of land and a house for free of charge. Okay. It was the answer to a prayer, a long, a long prayer. prayer that really lasted a very long time. And it there were took many, a number of years, the same prayer. There were many lessons prayer. to be learned within this whole experience. For me, Amen. Amen. For me, I had to learn the lesson of submission because, you know, this neighbor, uh, we were told, oh, sorry, <laughs> we were told by our neighbor, um, sorry, by our landlord where we were living that we should report the harassment that we were receiving from our previous neighbor to the police. 
And um, I wanted to do that. I was like, we're justified. You know, what the things that she's been doing we just we just blow your mind some of the things it, it even involved social services coming out to our family mm. okay she she just had a bee in her bonnet <laughs> and um i was ready to call the police but robert kept saying no and i was learning more and more as the years are going by the lesson of submission and i had to yield to that and and even my children would come to me and say mommy she's doing it when daddy's not here and in my mind, I'm like, no, the Lord is allowing her to do it whilst daddy's not here to press my buttons to see how I will respond. Will I just call up the, pick up the phone, which I could. My phone's always there. I could, he's out doing deliveries. I could just pick up the phone and make that call to the police. And on one occasion, I came near to it, with the exception of my daughter pulling on me, call daddy first, call daddy, mommy, call, because she knew that daddy didn't want that. And so I didn't. And the whole time, it was very hard for me, mm. very, very hard, to the point where, even though we've come out of the city, I was actually ready to pack my things and go and stay with my daughter, Talika, in London, just to get away from this neighbor, you know? But I didn't do that either. <laughs> so we learned the lesson of submission. So that was one lesson. And the, reason, yeah, the, the reason why this is quite poignant uh, for us anyway, very quickly, is because while we were going through this, and believe you me, it was very, very challenging, as I said, um, but... All was, uh, that was coming into my head was, the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And I'm like, if, if I've just read that, and that is what the Lord said, then I'm going to take that to the bank. So I'm not going to call police, even though this is way is easy mine. to call the police. You know, so mm. um, we claimed that, and we just kept on praying. Yeah. And it wasn't a one-week answer or even a one-month answer. This went on It for went years. on and on and on, yeah. But, but had we had not gone through that, this we wouldn't be able to share this testimony. No, we had to go through the tribulation and the trials, you know? And so this, again, is an encouragement to, to folks. It's like, you, you're not going to gain any victories or... Mm -hmm. See the blessing that That's God right. is, has in store for you at the other side of the trial. Yeah. If we don't go through the trial and hold fast, you know, I'd often come to Robert and I can imagine what pressure I must have put. I think I was a big bully, really. I put a lot of pressure on him. I'll come crying. Please, we need to call the police because she did this today and she did that today. And he was saying, what are you saying? You know, we, we've prayed to the Lord. What are you saying, Mish? Is, are you saying God is on holiday and he doesn't hear our prayers? He's off on vacation somewhere? And I'm like, no. He says, well, you know, he is able. He is able, you know. If he wanted to, he could send an angel to, to touch her and she would drop to the ground. The fact that he hasn't done anything means that he's trying to teach us a lesson. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And then sometimes I see him huddled in a corner looking at his Bible. And I know because I'm walking past and I'm like, oh, I've pushed him into a corner with his Bible now, you know. <laughs> and so he's there and I'm like, found anything? And he's like, Mish, it's the same thing. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. This is what God is telling me. And I'm like, oh, right, I'm going to get my Bible. And then I would look, vengeance is mine, saith <laughs> the Lord. Oh, you know, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, fine. You know, let's just leave it. And we just kept praying. And then we were going to run away to Romania at one point. We'd gone over there. We visited properties. And we had the money ready. And we were ready to buy. But nothing came. And then we got to January. And I was like, Lord, you know, we're at, literally at the precipice of a new season. Because January, you really need to make sure you've got your seeds. Because February, some of the heat-loving things need to go out. Lord, what would you have us to do? We can't take water into the field. What do, what we, if you asked us to farm, you have to fix this problem. Otherwise, what do we do? You know? and that was the prayer that we prayed. And then three days later, we had a phone call from... The, email. An email, sorry, I keep saying phone call. An email from the CEO of the McDonald Group of Hotels. And long story short, she said to us, she was a Christian, the owner, Mr. McDonald, Donald McDonald is a Christian. We found this out later. But basically, they wanted a farm on their land. So we were like, oh, okay. okay. And she said, well, if you could help us, you could consult for us. And, and teach us, help us to know how we could set this farm up. And we were like, okay. And then she was like, but better still, if you would come and bring your farm, because we have this place just around the corner from you. She's like, whereabouts are you? I was like, told her. And she's like, yeah, just around the corner. She said, we have 2,500 acres. Why don't you, she said, let's get a meeting with Mr. McDonald. So we did that. Long story short, we end up there. On 10 acres On of 10 land. acres of land, free of charge, because Mr. McDonald's, we said, is there a rent? He's like, no. <laughs> so we're like, okay. And then he's like, you know, he knew the, the, our situation because we shared about the, um, neighbor. the neighbor. And he was like, well, we have some cottages there. Why don't you go check it out? 
So we checked out a cottage and we were like, it's tiny, but we could make it work. It's like our little shepherd's hut whilst we're, you know, squirrelling money away so that we could buy our own place. And so we have more land than we now have house. That's right. <laughs> and That's I said to Robert, said, well, I think the Lord wants us just to be outside all the time, you know. And so that's how we moved there. But what's so funny is that exactly a month to the day that she called us, exactly a month to the day, I know where I was standing and what I was doing. I was in Costco. We were doing some shopping because we buy our loo roll there. And the phone rang. And I remember I picked up the phone in a, quite an unchristlike manner, actually, because I thought, oh, here we go again. It's probably SEPA calling to say that, I don't know, our... Um, septic, septic tank has blown up or something because this is what the neighbor would do she would just call up random people about random things and say that we've done something to harm the environment or something I don't know and so um, it was this man and so I thought oh another one I put it onto Robert I was like oh this is for you so he took the call and basically it was that man there Graham the one standing next to me and he was like we want to work basically with your farm. And we were like, oh, okay. He came to visit us. I'm yeah. saying everything. Do you no, know? that's fine. We I'm do this all gonna, the time. No, I'm just gonna, don't worry. <laughs> so he came to visit us in our little tunnel. There we were with this land, all oh. this land with one little tunnel. And mm. he came inside that tunnel and he says, what's your vision? And we were like, well, I don't even know if we gave the right answer, but I said, well, no, you know, we did say, uh, you know, as Christians, we don't really we kind of view it like that. We shared our testimony mm. of where we came from, how we ended up there and where we're going to. And he said, we can help you because we said, we just want to buy a house. That's all we want to do is just buy a house. We don't, we don't need a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. We just want to buy a house. Mm. And he's like, we can help you with this. He said, and what about the farm? He said, would you like tunnels all the way along here and all the way along there? I was like, oh yeah, that would be great. Long story short, they invested in the farm. They said, well, we'll give you the infrastructure. You farm for us. We buy the veg from you and you pay us back over three years. And we were like, hmm. Sounds good. This is, this is pretty good. No ties. So we were like, and there's no ties. Literally the contact, the contract, it's we're free. We can sell to whoever we want. But, you know, it's just loose. It's, you know, mm. and that's how it's been. And so here they invited us as VIPs. <laughs> We're so out of our depth. We don't even know, we don't even know how to dress. We've been so out of it. He was gonna wear his wellies, <laughs> right? People were there all dressed up, tuxedo and everything. And we would, we can see what we wore in the end. Yeah. And so um, it was a Highland Games and it was the, um, the CEO of, the biz of ESS for this region, for this division had invited us along with some of their clients and some other people to, and they even ordered us a taxi. Robert and I were scratching our head. We were like, why did they order us a taxi? Like, we could just drive we there. We could drive. We could just drive. Like, what's this taxi business? So we, they said, no, no, we'll get you a taxi. So we got in the taxi and they drove us there. And we're still in the taxi, whispering to each other, why are we in a taxi? We could have just driven there. We could just see the money racking up on their taxi system. And then um, we get there and we're sitting there and we see everybody else. Ah, we know why they ordered a taxi. You got it right, Brother Don. Yes, <laughs> they expected us to be drinking. And so we were like, we're sitting there sipping on orange juice and lemonade. While it's champagne. Yeah, and everyone's, sh yeah, because you could have as much champagne as you like and all sorts of things, you know. And so this, this was the event. This is our edible flowers and they'd made it in this little pot. The pot is edible, the mushroom is edible, the pebble is edible, in fact, the whole thing is edible. And the mud. The mud was edible. So it was supposed to be like the Garden of Eden, they called it, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the edible garden or something. And so that's, yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's that. Can we move on to the next? Next, yeah. <clears throat> Just some more of the produce that we grow. So we grew for them, um, we didn't grow a lot even this year. They, they have been so good to us. They said, look, when the, all the infrastructure was delivered, whew, there was so much stuff. And we had to put it up. And it was just Robert and I and Caleb. The girls weren't, aren't really that much help, but not putting up tunnels anyway. I mean, you know, they can help in some ways. It was a lot of work. And so we got to June and we'd only just almost finished putting up the tomato house by June. Mm. That is late. But we had put in some stuff into the field um, whilst we were over here building tunnels. It was just such 
it was just such mayhem this year. It but was. they were so good. You know, Graham said to us, take your time. Take your time. Yeah. You know, they said they were going to come with drones and video for their customers and stuff. And we were like, they never did that in the end because I said we felt that you probably you guys needed. You know, we won't really even expect you to produce anything for us, but we did. And um, it has sustained us this year. So, you know, as we've been doing this, we've come to realize that this really is a family operation. Mm. We, you know, if anybody's worried about the finance side, don't, really, don't. God, God will provide. You don't need to. We've mm. seen it with our own eyes, mm. um, the possibilities. I mean... God will provide. You know, so here we have our eldest son. Um, we were putting up tunnel number three. He mm. came to help us. Um, because, you know, we need help. And I think once they realize that we need help, they come. And so here's our eldest son. This was actually a video, but we couldn't, we've had so much technical problems, we couldn't get the video to run. But that's like a machine that's, that was given to us by the people that sold the tunnels to us that drives the posts into the ground. And there were many of them because it's 60 posts per tunnel. We had three tunnels and then we had a permanent tunnel that we had to put up. So we just started with that to, to begin with. We also, uh, the uh, McDonald's Hotel people, they, um, they also paid for us to have deer fencing. Mm. And so this is... <laughs> Again, but just less, we're going so quick. I know. But that was an answer to prayer. Because it at was. the end of the day, that deer fencing, we're covering 10 acres. We don't have money just lying mm -hmm. around. And that deer fencing cost, we spec'd it up, it cost four and a half grand? It would actually, yeah. Four it, grand? Four and a half. Four and a half, yeah, four and a four half and thousand pounds. But, but um, we'd already expended the budget that we were given for the investment. Had mm. we not, because what happened is the CEO told us deer fencing will be included because Mr. McDonald said so. But the other director said, no, I think they need to pay for it. Mm. Then she left. And so then we were like, now what do we do? So then another guy from McDonald's, some of the other direct finance director mm. came to us and said, let's see what we can let's do. see what we can do. Long story short, we just prayed. We actually, I felt like crying when mm. I heard that she left. I was like, oh, no. But then the Lord is like, don't lean on man. I'm here. She, people will come and go, but I'm here. And so, <laughs> exactly. And so we prayed. Mm. And then, um, we, didn't, we weren't not expecting this. The, the other director turned around and said, we'll, we'll foot the bill. We'll pay for the, for the deer fencing. It was a complete turn in his heart. Complete turn. Yeah, so we were so busy over here setting up infrastructure. We had all the deer fencing over here that needed to go up and we wanted to put it up before we put stuff out into the field as well because otherwise the deers would just come and eat it. And so we had this mini digger delivered and it's just sat there doing nothing. Yeah. Because, because we were too busy. So then I said, I went up to Robert, I was like, um, what about Caleb using it? <laughs> because like, he could use it, couldn't he? So as soon as he had finished school, we were like, hey. <laughs> and um, it, it took him all of like five minutes to learn the controls and everything. And, you know, young people just love all this sort yeah. of stuff. You so know, he you literally went crazy. He went around the whole 10 acre field, digging all the holes for our strainers, strainers and the. Uh, what are the, the other ones called? I can't remember. Turners. Turners. The strainers and the turners. So. His dad went out and plotted where they were to be. And then he would go in this little... <laughs> it was so funny to watch. And then he would be digging. And he took out this huge, huge boulder. Rock. Huge rock. Yeah, but he absolutely loved it. And now we've got to order it again for a week because now we've... we've oh, anyway, long story. So he'll be on it again. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. So he's learned another skill. Mm. And here we have a farmer and his son working together. So we're over here still doing the infrastructure and he's over there digging and digging and he's loving every minute of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's not for, for young people. I mean, if Caleb was here, you, you he could is, ask he's him. Up, he's up there. I know, but I just don't, I don't want him to shout or Focus. whatever. But the point is, this isn't work. This is like fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even for adults, it's fun. I mean, for children, it's like, this is, oh. And he, <laughs> he does have quite an engineering mind. I mean, even from when we've had babies, like he'll be the one that will work out how to open and close the pushchair because I have no clue. Yeah. He knows how to put the seats up and down in the car. I have no clue. So he just figures everything out, putting, you know, the different attachments on the tractor. His dad doesn't even bother anymore. If we need the change, we call Caleb. Yeah, that's right. I haven't changed the rotavator or the plow like yeah. probably back a year. And, and, he, and we gave him also his own plot and he's been doing some maths. And he's like, if I do, if I, if I grow this and this and this and this, 
I could buy a Tesla. And we're like, what? How did you get from there to over calm here? Down, calm down. <laughs> calm down. So, you know, yeah. so he's, I think he's kind so of coining the driving idea. Driving off into the sunset. Yeah, literally. Like, yeah. he hasn't even got a driving license yet, and he's already bought every single car that you can buy. Yeah. So, you know, but it's good because he can see that actually farming can actually give him an income, and he yeah. actually loves it. He's yeah. up and down in that tractor all the time. All the time. All you the know, time. sometimes we're like, okay, you know, let's save a bit of fuel. Burning you know? the fuel. <laughs> but it's yeah. fun. It's fun. And they're only young, you know, you're only young once. So our, our mentality is, you know, enjoy, enjoy the youth. So this, this is... Um, is this me? Yeah, I think that... Yeah, this is Robert actually coming down. We're just... This but is we in, we're all helping. This is inside the third tunnel that our son, Marie, helped us to build. And so, and this, this was the courgette house. It's literally, it's just, we've been giving, getting weekly, like weekly harvests harvest from it every single week since they came up, up until even now. In fact, Tuesday just gone, we just took stuff into compass. Yeah. So this is, this is the deer fencing being, uh, it was now, a lot, a lot of fence. I don't know if he, I don't know if he's in your class, Lorraine, but, um, because he's now, we're doing remnant prep with, with these folks. And I remember he was in school when this was happening and he was just eager to get outside. So if he wasn't concentrating, you know why? You can see now. <laughs> because he just, you know, and the girls were out there and the guy, they were so friendly. They're like, oh, press this button and press that button and do this and do that, you know. Yeah, so this is Caleb again on the tractor. It's not some new swanky tractor. It's an old tractor. But it's, the, it's now a famous tractor. It's a famous tractor. <laughs> <laughs> but it so. does what it needs to do. And at the end of the day, it serves our family really well. So, you know, there were other pictures that we could have shown. Right. Yeah, because... Go on. Mm. Oh, did you skip over some? Yeah. yeah. No, there was one, that, one in particular, the oh. most recent, of the folks that came. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's this one. So... This actually happened two weeks ago, two weeks ago, Channel 4. It's a program that's coming out in November, so look out for it. But basically, do anybody know these people? Yeah. New, yes. And do you know the guy? Yeah. Alan Cummings. OK. Listen, we don't watch TV. We don't even have a TV in our house. And so they, Channel 4 called us up and said, oh, would you film for us? Um, you know, this show, da, 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 da. they told us about it. Well, they told you about it. I wasn't even there, actually. I was with Talika. She's just having a baby. And um, anyway, so the plant, they came out. They checked out the farm and everything. Oh, this will be great. You know, they'll love it because Alan Cummings apparently is vegan and you're a veganic farm and he'd love to know all about that. And so we were like, okay. So um, the day came, the day arrived and they came. And I'm standing in the field. And just before he came into the garden, I was like, I said to one of the film crew, I was like, who is Alan Cummings anyway? And the guy sort of stood back, he's like, you don't know who he is? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and he was like, oh, he was in Marvel's X-Men and this, and he's just reading off all these films, Spy Kids. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know. And then he just sort of walks on. And I said to Robert, I said, actually, this is really good for us mm. because the fact that we don't know these people, when they come onto the farm and we film with them, we just treat them like normal. I mean, they are normal people anyway, but there's no hype. We're just like, hi, mm. you know? <laughs> and it works really well, you know? And this lady, I don't know if you, you probably won't know her. She's a voice for a lot of things. Uh, babe, Babe Pick in the City, um, Harry Potter. <laughs> she actually was, she w we were talking with her. Mm. Um, it was amazing. It was a really amazing experience, actually, because these people are really quite secular, you know? But she was really taken back by the farm. Mm. Well, not just Very the farm, contemplative. everything. Because when they first arrived, they met the children <laughs> first. And they had, as you can see, they got the dog there. And the, and chi the children, love they dogs. love dogs. So they were actually just talking with the children for a long while. Just, I was a little bit worried. <laughs> I was like, well, what, conversation what are they saying? <laughs> but they were talking with them for, for a long while. Um, and they were obviously impressed with something. And then afterwards, then they came in to do the, the, to, to do the filming. And when we were doing the filming, then um, two no, as we were talking, the lady said, um, we, I think, uh, yeah, they asked again, 
how did you come here, this, that, the other. So we, we just shared the testimony real quick. We said, well, how long do you have? So we said, okay, we'll share it real quick. And this is all being filmed like a reality type thing. Mm -hmm. So we shared. And so she said, oh, so you're Christian then? And we I'm said, like, yes. um, yeah. And she said, um, so you don't believe in science? And we were like, yeah, yeah we, we believe in we science. Believe in science. Um, yeah. yeah. So she said, you're creationists. We were like, yeah, we are creation. But it was that kind of thing. And, and it was all on camera, like cameras, like in your face. Like mm -hmm. this is the first time we had, we didn't, I don't even think we realized because usually when STV came out and even Escape to the Country, we were like, it's just a small film crew. But this was a massive film crew. And we were just not prepared for this. And like, literally it was like the cameras in your face and they asked the question, so what brought you here? And, and we're okay. sort of looking at each other, we're like, and in, in your head, you're thinking, do you really want to know? <laughs> you know? And so we can't lie. So we just share the testimony. Well, you know, ever since we took our faith more seriously, you know, we were reading the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, you know, a little book called Country Living by Ellen White. And we we're just, just sharing all of this, you know, and it's all on camera. We're like, okay, what are they going to edit out? But we'll soon see. It's coming out in November. And so um, it's just a really interesting thing. And then the lady, Miriam, we shared with her that we were homeschooling because this is, I think some of this might have been off camera. Yeah. We were just talking and you, she's looking at us and she's just like, I'm not a Christian, she said, but what you guys are doing, mm. she said, this is just amazing. She said, if, she said, what's something about if, if I could do this, if mm. I could, you know, she kept sort of saying, if, if only I could do this, I would love to do this, mm. you know. It would be, be really country, good for me be being in the country. countries that, you know, all of this kind of talk. And then we were sort of talking about Harry Potter because she looked at the children. She said, so have you watched Harry Potter? And they're like, no. She said, good. She said, leave it that way. And she was pretty serious about it. And I was like, wow, look at this, mm -hmm. you know. And so we just want to share these things because you know what, um, brothers and sisters, we had nothing to do with any of it. We don't call up Channel 4 and say, oh, We've got a really good phone. Would you like to, you know, we don't do any of this. We're the, they call us and it's all God because through the farm, he's able to get his message to the world. Mm. It's just crazy, you know, and not only to the world, but he's able, we're able to, to speak to these people. You know, we were talking about Jesus, you know, Alan Cummings was giving his definition of who he thinks Jesus is. And we're like, fine. We're like, okay, whatever, whatever you know. <laughs> But, mm. you know, it's, it's just been, and the children are there. It's just a marvellous, you know, I think what it experience. is. I think what it is, we were just saying, just in closing, is that the picture that God has, I don't think as Adventists that we've completely grasped what that picture is. And when people from secular society, when they get a glimpse of what you're trying to do, they can sort of more see it more than we can see it. Yeah. And they're actually taken aback. I mean, we kept on saying, um, we're not trying to get into it now because it was quite, there was a lot of deep conversations, but we weren't actually trying to have deep conversations no. with them. But she kept on bringing these she conversations. She pushing it, and pushing. She was just, it was like she was overwhelmed with what she was seeing. You know, and you could being see in it. the country, children mm -hmm. just roaming free. You know, we're growing. And she was just like, wow, this is just unbelievable. This is just... She was, if you could see her face moved. and everything, she was moved. Yeah, I would, you know, you wouldn't, you would kind of half expect her to cry. Yeah. That's, that's what it was like. And then the producer, she was like, oh, this is a family farm. She, this is wonderful. She can we get the children in the background over there somewhere, just milling through the tomatoes? And we're like, sure. I haven't even done an A's hair. She wasn't expecting, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I thought they were going to just be inside, you know? So yeah. it's just been an amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. So we're know? just, the idea was just, no, the idea oh. was um, just by way of <clears throat> encouragement, just to share what the possibilities are. But we have to trust God first. We have to trust him with everything. Now, there is a flip side. And um, as we were just saying, the other two messages that we're, we're going to give, we're going to go into a little bit more depth, not so much on it's testimonial. On but really just dealing with some of the specifics, um, Bible, spirit of prophecy of what God is actually calling us to be in terms of families. But I just want to add this last thing, which I've kind of left right to the end, a little climax. Uh, many of you saw our daughter here earlier. Mm. Um, if you're watching, Tadika, hi. <laughs> she probably wouldn't be, but hey. So um, she's married to a Muslim guy. And they have a little 
Ishmaelite child, <laughs> I call it. And um, basically, you know, for us, we feel um, sad in some ways, you know, we, we're sad in some ways. But I actually really like Hassan. I think he's a really nice guy. I think he's a really, really nice guy. And um, I always say to Tadika, oh, he'd make such a good Adventist. Mm -hmm. He's so sincere in his faith. He takes everything so seriously, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, when I went down there, now I've had telephone, com we've had telephone conversations with them over the phone, talking about Christ and Islam and all of this stuff. It never really ends very well. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. And, you know, he's told Tadika, because uh, Tadika still ha owns her Bible, and he's told Tadika, you know, Oh, get it out of the house, you know, and all of this. So anyway, I decided because I felt impressed by the spirit, just stay quiet, don't say anything. Just be the mother, just share yourself um, and maintain the spirit of Christ. So that's what I did. So I had to go down there and I was kind of, in some ways I was kind of dreading it a bit. Because I was like, oh, no, we're going to get into rows. It's going to be like this and like that. But then I decided, no, I'm going to follow what the Holy Spirit has given me, and I'm just going to stay quiet. Mm. So I went there, and I just played old Mother Hubbard. <laughs> and um, it was a really interesting experience. I'm not going to go into the details now, but I will tell you what the outcome of that was. The outcome of it is, actually, whilst I was there, why don't you go in the living room and read the Injil? You know, you can go and read the Bible in there. Tadika's like, really? You know, she's like, how come he's telling you that? But, you know, and I was like, I don't know. So, and then he's like, I decided to go to church when I was stay staying there. He's like, what do they do in church? You know, this curious inquisitiveness. And so Tadika's trying to explain, you know, they do this, they do that. And then he starts asking me questions about the Bible and stuff like that. It was a blessing. Mm -hmm. It was a real blessing. And I'll just leave it like that for now. But then we got into the subject of the farm. Long story short, this young man loves farming. He loves the idea of farming. He says, you know, what you're doing, he said, it's just amazing. He said, because in the Quran, he says, this is what we should be doing. We're supposed to come out of the city and go into the countryside. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. He said, but you know, I don't know anybody that's done it except for you. And so he's told all his friends, you know, oh, you know, my Christian um, in-laws, you know, they're in the countryside and they're farming. You know, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And so we, we get into conversations like, you know, the end of it, he, he's promoting himself to me. Mm. I need to come and work on your farm. And we're like, okay. And he's like, I can do anything. He says, you know, I can fly. He says, I can run. He said, I can, I can harvest all night long. He's like, I'm strong. I can, you know, I'll just do everything. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this That's is strange. really weird. <laughs> and so anyway, I, by the time I left after the two weeks, I mean, he was trying to get me to stay. Can't you stay until October? The baby was born in the beginning of August. I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't stay until October. Oh, mummy, you need, that's what he calls me. Oh, mummy, you need to stay until October. I was like, no, no. And he's like, okay. He said, I need to come on your farm. By the time we left, they've decided that they're moving to Aberdeenshire. <laughs> we look at each other like, okay, like, really? And they're like, yeah. And so he went and got himself a second job. He's like, right, how much do I need? He said, I need to get some tunnels. And we're like, okay. So he's like, you know, I calls him Uncle Rob. And I'm like, how come I'm mummy and he's Uncle Rob? Like, <laughs> he's like, Uncle Rob, how much do I need for the tunnels? And we're like, well, you know. So we're telling him the promise, the, the price. And he's like, right, I need to get this much money. He says, I need a second job. By the end of the next day, he had a second job. Mm -hmm. And he's working 12 hours a day. So the first, so... One job, he works for Network Rail as an, a rail engineer. And, the, and in the evening, or just before he starts, because he does nights, so he does 5 o'clock in the afternoon until 10 o'clock doing couriering so that he can save money for the tunnels. And then he does 10 o'clock until 5 o'clock in the morning on the Network Rail job, just so that he can get money together to do these tunnels. Mm. And so <laughs> it's, just, it's just bizarre, and it's just so weird. And then they're looking at properties, Oh, mummy, do you think when I come up, I can come and view this property and view that property? And I'm like, I suppose, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, Robert and I look at each other like, what on earth? So this, this is what a... What on earth is this? This is you a... Know? Yeah, go on, sorry. And then one other thing. So obviously she just had a baby. So Marie comes along and he's like, okay, I'm going to come with Sophie, which is his lady friend. 
I'm going to come in with Sophie. We're going to come and visit the baby mm. whilst I was there with Talika and the girls. And then he's there and then it came up in conversation. Talika's like, oh yeah, because we're moving to Aberdeenshire. And he's like, huh? He says, oh, you're going back to Scotland? And she says, yeah. He says, what for? And he's like, oh, Hassan wants to farm with daddy. And Marie's like, huh? You know? <laughs> and so it's so funny because when Marie came and helped us the last time, Robert's like, you know that you have a place on, the, you know, he called him up after he'd left. You know you have a place on the farm. You know that this is where we want you to be. You know, he's given him this whole father-son talk. Yeah, 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 says I've Marie. I've got my own things to do. Yeah, but he's really got his own things to do. But then he's hearing his sister and, and Hassan, like, he's almost taking a place that he should have. Mm. And so he's like, so he, he's like, so you're, you're going back to Scotland, you're going to work on the farm. And, he, and I could see his face because I was sort of looking at the corner of my eyes. And his face is like dropped. And then next minute it picked up and he looked at his lady friend, Sophie, and he's like, you ready to move to Scotland? And she was like, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and so who knows what's happening? Mm -hmm. I said to Robert, I said, well, you it's know. A, it's a testimony in the making. It's a testimony. But what we're seeing, yeah, go on. I just let me finish yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. Because the way that I, <laughs> I'm like, look, this is just straight. My heart was very heavy yeah. when I went down to see today. I've got to tell you, my heart was very, very, very heavy. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, have we done so badly that now we have... Oh, you know, I, you know, my words just can't express mm -hmm. how I feel, okay? And I was in tears. I was in the bathroom in her place crying. Oh, Lord, this child's never going to know Jesus, you know, and all of this, you know. And it, this is, but I think the Lord knew how heavy my heart was. Mm -hmm. But the conversations that I had with Hassan really did perk me up. And then the conversations that we had about the farm perked me up. And I was like, you know what? Anything is possible with God. Amen. Anything is possible. Even his father, even Hassan's father's like, yes, you need to go farm with them. Because at first, you know, they're Libyan, right? It's all culture, you know, you go and you do your father's business and all this kind of stuff. His, farm has a, his father has a bakery business in Libya. And, and so his, he was supposed to go to Libya and take Talika with him to go and work the father's farm. But when he heard about the farming, he spoke to his father, who's in Libya, and his father says, go. His uncle said, go, I'll give you so much money, go. Don't talk to religion because they might hate you. <laughs> he said, but, but you go, go, you know? And so Talika's like, <laughs> and it's so funny because she, I've got to share this because it's just so funny. To me it is, you know, here she is leaving the countryside because that's what she did when she was 19. She left the countryside to go to the city. And then he's, uh, her husband is like, okay, I've looked to see where the Muslim brothers are and I can't see any near where they live. So maybe we could go to Aberdeen. She's like, well, I'm not going to Aberdeen. She said, you can go and live in the city. I'll be with my parents. <laughs> you know, obviously that's, she's just messing around, you know, but it's just, it's just absolutely amazing what's happening. And I said to Robert, going back to what I was going to say, mm. I said to Robert, I, I said I was about the Ishmaelites. No, go on. Oh, I was saying that even God used the Ishmaelites to save Joseph out of the pit. Okay, there's many instances in the Bible where God has used other people to bring people back or to, and maybe this could be the. Please pray for my family. Please, please, for our family. Please pray for our children. You know, but we do feel, we do believe, and God is able. He's He is able. Now we've got to convert so many more people. His family, you know. <laughs> You know, it's, we've got, you know, burden art is added to burden now. <laughs> but what we're seeing is, in just closing now, what we're seeing is, from the quotes that, that we shared, we honestly believe that through doing agriculture, this is our belief on what we've seen, it will bring the family together. together. You know? We honestly believe that. Whether that's family that are in the house or family that are outside the house. We believe that, and that's the promises that we're, we're relying on, and we're starting to see a little glimmers, little seeds of hope. Yeah, and that's it. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. okay, I think you went way over. Praise the Lord for that testimony. Thank you very much for sharing. We're going to pray, and that will be the end of our first day. Let's pray. Can you stand with me, please?
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you very much, Lord, for the day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for, for the messages of this morning and this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the breakouts, for, for the activities that we had. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things that you're doing with the Sullivans. And dear Lord God, I pray that you will continue to open doors for them, that you will guide them, that you will save their children and extend their family. And dear Lord God, that they can continue to be a beacon of light. And that you help all of us, Lord, wherever we are, to hear what you're calling us to do and to take you at your word, to exercise faith, to learn to trust in you, so that we can also be light wherever you, wherever you are sending us and wherever you have sent us to. Give us a good night. And again, we thank you for this beautiful and wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen.